I will remind you what we had for previous session. We have started to discuss about the internal combustion engine as one of the most important invention of human beings and uh, one of the most popular type of the heat engine actually. And I told you that in this type of the engine, we have, yes, a power cycle. And the gas power cycle, the idealized gas power cycle, which we have for this type of the engine is auto cycle. I introduced you the auto cycle for a forest truck spark ignition engine, which is also the class which auto cycle can describe its cycle. And I told you about its efficiency. I told you what are the uh, effective uh, uh, parameter and the efficiency of the cycle. I told you about the parameter which are effective on the efficiency of the cycle, which are the uh, specific ratio as K and the uh, compression ratio as R for this type of the engine. And I told you what is the uh, typical range for the compression ratio for the spark ignition engine or for auto cycle. And I told you why we have a limit for the maximum or to for the we have an upper limit for the compression ratio for the auto cycle because of the auto ignition which cause engine knock and high vibration of the engine. And also I told you the K has a specific heat ratio for A is 1.4 and usually the K which we use in our equation also is equal to 1.4. So now in this session, I'm going to solve an example to show you how we can use this cycle or we can use the equation which I introduced you in previous session to find different properties for the Cycle. Here we have an ideal auto cycle. You can see this cycle in this diagram. However, you need to memorize this cycle. It is important because this is a typical uh, uh, PV diagram for a cycle. Ideal auto cycle always is like this, only the values are different. In this cycle, we have two isentropic processes and to constant volume processes, which I already talked about them. And during the one of the constant volume process, uh, we have it gained by the cycle, and during one of those, the other constant heat process, we have Q out. And we have also isentropic compression process and isentropic uh, expansion process. Now we have information about some states, you know, here point one, which is shown by number one, is two, three, four. You know them, they are four states in this cycle. And the green line, each one of them, uh, shows one process in this cycle. Now we have information about one of these uh, states, which is the, uh, you know, start of the uh, cycle, you know that in the because this cycle is describing the uh, cycle which we have in the spark condition engine. You know that start with expansion or uh, the uh, the compression actually here is shown as the compression in the ideal auto cycle, which is idealized one because uh, we don't have in real world such a cycle, but it is just idealized cycle based on the assumption which we have. So imagine we have an ideal auto cycle like this, and ideal auto cycle has a compression ratio of eight. In other words, uh, the uh, V max divided by V mean is equal to eight, or the maximum volume of the cylinder when the piston is in bottom the center divided by, you now I hope you remember this equation which we had, or compression ratio. You can see now why it is important. Compression ratio, V max divided by V mean. V max is when the piston is in its bottom dead center, V uh, mean 
if when a piston is in its, uh, its top the center. So now here, this compression ratio is given for this uh, cycle. And uh, as I said, you need to memorize this cycle. So if it is written that, the compression ratio is eight. We need to come to this PV diagram. So in a state one and four, we have maximum possible volume. You know, this is V, the volume. And in a state two and three, you know, volume at the state two and three are identical. So volume for those two states are equal. And you can see here we have minimum uh, volume. So this V. We want, for example, divided by V2, or we want divided by V3, or V4 divided by V3 will be equal to 8, or vice versa. V3 is 1 by 8 of V1. At the beginning of the compression process, air is at 100 kilopascal, and its temperature is 17 degrees Celsius at the beginning of the uh, com uh, compression process. So let's go to our diagram. What is the beginning of the compression process? It means, you know, we have here, this is compression process, this is expansion process. So at the beginning of this uh, compression, uh, compression process in this cycle actually is state one. So in state one, pressure is 100 kilopascal, it's shown here. And temperature is 17 degrees Celsius, which is useful in our um, analysis of the question. Later, we will see how and what. So we have T1 and and the 800 kilojoule per kilogram of heat is transferred to air during the constant volume heat addition process. Okay, where is the heat addition process in the auto cycle? The process from state two to state three in an uh, ideal auto cycle is uh, that we have Q in or heat gain for the cycle in this process actually. From state two to state three. So Q in during this process is equal to 800 kilojoule per kilogram. So we have Q in as well. And you can see here, it is mentioned that it is transferred to air. How we can, uh, how it is mentioned that uh, uh, you know, the working fluid is air, because it is according to our assumption. In, uh, without that, we cannot have an ideal autocycle. Then accounting for the variation of specific heats of air with temperature, it means we need to find properties of air in this cycle for different temperatures. We cannot assume that the specific heat for the air is constant. So uh, let's see how it is uh, effective on our calculation later. Now we need to determine the maximum uh, temperature and pressure that occur during this cycle. Simply, you can guess from the cycle that maximum pressure is in state three end of the uh, you know compression and uh, the uh, constant volume heat gain process so uh, p3 and t3 are the maximum pressure and temperature in this cycle so we need to determine p3 and t3 for part a in part b the net work output is to be determined or W net of the cycle, we will see how we can determine that. Also, we need to determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle or uh, its uh, TH, and also we need to find the mean effective pressure for the cycle or MEP for the cycle. If we have, if we calculate you know, W net according to the equation for MEP, which I already introduced to you according to uh, this equation, if we calculate W net, because here, you know, uh, the V max and V mean, you know, the relationship between them is given. 
first, we need also determine one of them. We want or uh, we want or we choose or uh, we for or uh, we three. We need to determine one of them. Then we can calculate the mean effective pressure for this time. And also, we need to determine the power output from the cycle in terms of kilowatt for an engine speed of 4,000 RPM or revolution per minute. So we need to also determine the whole power which we can get from this engine. You know, uh, you may heard about that. The engines are classified also according to their power. When you are going to buy an engine or for a, buy a car or you know, for different type of cars, you know that the uh, power of the engine is different and they are classified based on them. For example, I think one of the most common type of the car in the Malaysia is uh, Produa Maiwi. And you know that we have two types of the Produa Maiwi. One of them is 1.3, uh, which shows, you know, actually this is the capacity of the engine. The other one is 1.5. This is capacity of the engine, but why it is important? Because it is effective on the power output of the engine. So the power output, the whole power output of the engine is important parameter, and we are going to calculate for an engine which has this uh, cycle and uh, the for the you know because the revolution of the engine is uh, or revolution of the number of Revolution of the engine is effective on the number of cycles. Effective on the power which we can get from the engine. You will see in the example. And for this, you can see also the total displacement volume of the uh, whole engine is given as well, which is 1.6 liter. So this is also important information. And uh, this 1.6 liter engine capacity is divided between four cylinders. Simply, each cylinder is one by uh, fourth of this engine. Now, let's see how we can solve this problem. As I said, here we have an ideal light autocycle, and we need to calculate the parameter which I mentioned in the previous uh, part. Now, as I told you, it is important to declare your assumptions. You know, this is the crucial part. Without these assumptions, you cannot use the, those equations, which the, I will use them in the rest of this example. So we, you need to have those assumptions. Without those, uh, those assumptions, it means you just, you know, uh, memorize the equation without any reason. You are just using those equations. So it's important to declare your assumptions. Assumption number one, the A standard assumptions are applicable. And, you know, this assumption actually itself includes four other assumptions I introduced to you in previous session. It includes that uh, the working fluid is air and uh, we don't have any irreversibility for any of the processes. We have four different processes here. And also the heat gain and heat rejection is replaced by the entrance and uh, exit of the air flow to the cylinder. So I already told you about a standard assumption for this session, so you can refer to that. Two kinetic and potential energy changes are negligible. We can have the assumption again because, uh, you know, here nothing changed actually, uh, or the change in these two type of the energies are not effective in the uh, total amount of the energy which we have. From thermodynamics also, we had an example to show this, which the change in the kinetic and potential energy for a piston cylinder device is negligible. So we can have this assumption without a big error, actually. And the third assumption is the variation of specific heat with temperature is to be accounted for, because it is mentioned in the question instruction. We will see how it is effective. To, as I said, to solve this problem, you need to know the PV diagram for uh, auto cycle, as I shown here. So, you know, this graph actually is not given to you. You need to draw this graph by yourself. You need to determine state one, two, three, four by yourself. You need to know 
in which one of these processes we have compression, in which one we have heat gain, in which one we have heat rejection. Because as I said, this auto cycle is always like this. The only change is you know, the values. For example, the pressure may be higher or lower and so on. But the processes are same for any ideal auto cycle. So first we need to draw this uh, Q diagram for this uh, uh, cycle, the idealized auto cycle. And it is, I think it is not required to remind you that we have a closed system here. Now, as I said, the maximum temperature and pressure in auto cycle occurs at the end of the constant volume heat addition process, which it means in this state, state three. But to find temperature at this speed, what we need to do, if you remember from thermodynamics, we usually start with uh, an state, uh, start with a state, which we have information about that state. Here, the information which is given for this cycle is about state one. So for this state, you remember that it is mentioned temperature and pressure, pressure is 100, uh, Kilopascal and temperature was mentioned 17 degrees Celsius. First, we need to convert that to Kelvin. T1 will be equal to 190 Kelvin. It is easy. We need to add 273 to the temperature, which was given 17 plus 273. Then it will give you uh, this T1 equal to 290 Kelvin. Okay, so the temperature for state one is given T1 equal to 290 Kelvin. Now, how we can find the other properties for this state? Any idea? You know, here it is mentioned that we have air as an ideal gas in our cycle. And you know that the, prop the temperature and other properties which we have are thermodynamics properties. We can find these properties with different methods, and one of the most popular methods is to use thermodynamics table. So here, because we have air, let's see if we have any table for to find thermodynamics properties for the air. Yeah, we have the table here. You can see that table A seventy, which is able to show the properties of air as an ideal gas. You can see in this table enthalpy uh, and other properties of the uh, air in different temperatures are given. So here the temperature is 290 Kelvin. We are interested to find some of the other properties for this state. If you want it 290, you can find come to the table, 290 is here. Then you can find the other properties, enthalpy, PR, or pressure, ratio actually, uh, the uh, internal energy, or U, B, R, and also the other property which we require here. The property which are useful here for us are U1, or energy in the system, why is it important? Later you will see, because you know, during this process, energy of the system is changed. To find that, simply we can use this equation, U3 minus U2. So we need to find U2 and U3. And we need to start with state one. First, we need to find uh, U1 or internal energy for state one. Then we can find the other, uh, the U for the other states as well. And uh, we are one which is the relative specific volume. If you go back and uh, review thermodynamics, I already introduced you, or it is introduced to you, it's, it is uh, properties of the cycle. It helps us, actually, it helps us to find the other properties for a given, for temperature, or for a given internal energy, and so on. So we found U1, we are one for relative specific volume for state one from table A70. Now let's see. So we have this for this state. How we can find uh, M dynamic property for state two? Process which we have from state one to state two is an isentropic compression of an ideal gas. We have this equation for 
this type of the processes for an isentropic compression, compression of an ideal gas, we have this equation. This equation comes from thermodynamics, which it says the relative specific volume for two different states are equal to a specific volume for those two states. This equation, this equation is only valid for uh, this process. It's isentropic compression for an ideal gas. You can see here why that assumption is important. Because if we don't have any ideal, because if the working front is not ideal gas, we cannot use this equation. But fortunately, we assume that we have ideal gas, so we can use this equation. We are two divided by we are one, well, two we two divided by v one. And you know that if you notice here, v two and v one are the minimum and maximum volume of the piston cylinder or system actually generally during this cycle which means it is you know the uh, uh, compression ratio v1 divided by v2 will be compression ratio and v2 divided by v1 is the uh, opposite direction so one divided by r we can we know this from compression ratio uh, equation now if we restructure this equation we can write vr2 is equal to vr1 divided by r we have vr1 from this uh, from table r is given for compression ratio is 8 so simply we can calculate vr2 as the relative specific one for state 2 so now we found a uh, property for this state, for a state two. What we can do again, because we have a property as we are two, if you go to this table, you can see we are in the properties of the air as in our gas in this table. So if we have this property, then we can go to this table and find the other properties for that state, we have the R2. Now we are going to find T2 and U2 temperature at this state and internal energy for this state. We can also find other properties for this state. So, how we can do that? We are to is given 54.51. Okay, let's go to the table. You can see here we are to start from 1700 something and by increasing the temperature, it's still reducing. You can see. And here you can see that uh, what we have here is 84. Uh, so, you know, here we have 81. Here we have 85. So uh, our VR is between these two uh, VR actually. Then it means U also for this state or U2 and T2 actually are between these two temperatures. So, okay, we have this. Now, what we need to do? Any idea what we need to do to find T2 and U2? Class, any idea how we can find, you know, from this table, we have VR between these two numbers, how we can find temperature and internal energy for this we are any idea we need to do interpolation i'm not going to do that here for you you need to know that from thermodynamics and uh, we need to do interpolation here to find t2 and u2 i will share with you this and you need to come up with the interpolation process to find t2 and u so by interpolation, you can find T2 and U2 from table. Once you found this T2 and U2, uh, we have the property for state two. So now, do you remember, we are looking for P2. 
tree tree and p tree. So we found the property for state two. Now by these and the, by the properties or information about the property of the state two, and by the information about the process from state two and state three, which we know that this process is a constant volume process. Now we can go and find properties for a state three. How we can do that? We have this equation. I hope you remember this equation. This is equation which we call that ideal gas law relation. So we can write for this P2 is equal to T2 uh, equal to P1 V1 divided by T1. We can write this for any of these processes actually because uh, we have an ideal gas. So by this we can calculate P2. How? Because we have P1, we have a T2, we have a T1, and V1 divided by V2. V1 divided by V2 is compression ratio, which is G rate is equal to A. So we also can find pressure for this state. P2 is equal to 1799.7 kilo Pascal. How about process from state two to state three? We have a constant volume heat addition here. So during this heat addition, you know, if we write the first law of thermodynamics for this process, during the process, this process, we have Q into the system. You know, the other type of the energy are uh, doesn't change, or you know, we can assume they doesn't change. So only internal energy of the system during this process is changed, which is due to the heat gain of the system during this process. So Q in is equal to U3 minus U2. Q in is given 800 kilojoules per kilogram. U3 we don't have, U2 we have calculated here. By rearrangement, we can also calculate U3 as the internal energy of the uh, system at state three. So again, here we have a property for the system at this state. How we can find the other property like T three and V R three? Again, we need to go to the table because we have U three. U three is one thousand two hundred seventy-five. So if you come to this table, table is the wind thing in your textbook or in any other uh, thermodynamics table actually. Here, um, U is 1,200 something. You can see here, U start from 142 for 200 Kelvin, room temperature or almost room temperature actually. It is increasing by increasing the temperature. You can see here, uh, U is increasing, and here in our table, in this one, the maximum U we should have is 968. This table actually is a long table. I didn't bring, uh, I haven't brought all of this table here, but if we have this U in this uh, table, table is 17, you can find uh, this U in the table, then again by inter you can find T3 and we are 3 Temperature at of state 3, temperature of the system at state 3, and relative specific volume of the system at state 3 also can be determined by the system. So we have calculated uh, or we found the temperature for state 3 or maximum temperature of the system. Now we are going to find pressure or maximum pressure in the system. Again, as I said, we have a process for a ideal gas. We can write this equation as ideal gas. So P3 V3 divided by T3 is equal to P2 V2 divided by 2. This relation for this state, for this state is equal to that the same relation in for this. So P3, V3, P3, uh, 
Uh, now we restructure this equation, P3 equals to P2 times P3 divided by P2 times V2 divided by V2. This is just restructuring of this equation. Finally, we can calculate P3. How? Because we have P2 as calculated. We have temperature at state 3, as we found here. We have temperature at state 2, we found in the previous step. And V2 divided by V3. We have a constant volume process. So V3 is equal to V3. It will be equal to Y. Finally, we can calculate uh, P3 or maximum pressure of the cycle by this equation, which is equal to 4.375 megapascal. So this is the answer for part A. In part B, the question is to find network output for the cycle. How we can determine that? We have two different options. The first one is uh, we can use the boundary work involved in each process. You know, chair, if you remember for a closed system, a piston cylinder device, we need to find, you know, the only work which is an answer for this type of the system is uh, boundary work. I hope you already remember that. P D V. We need to write an integration and calculate this P D V for all of these four processes. Then the summation of that will give us the boundary work of the system. For example, for this process and this process, the boundary work is zero. Why? Because it's constant volume process. But the other uh, option which we have is to use this equation. You know that for a heat engine, which all the cycle also is for spark ignition engine, which is a type of internal combustion engine, which is a heat engine. We can write this equation. W net is equal to Q net is equal to Q in minus Q out. Here Q in is given, it is 800. If we can find Q out, we can use this equation to find W net. Okay, now let's see if we can find Q out. Q out is in this process, a constant volume process, an isentropy constant volume process. Again, here we have it all guess, we can write this equation, we are four, divided by VR3 for uh, relative uh, volume equal to V4 divided by V3. All of that equals to R. You know that V4, V3. V4 maximum volume, V3 minimum volume, which is compression ratio actually. So we have R again. Now we can use this equation VR4 equal to R times VR3. We are three, we have already calculated in previous step, and R also is given as compression ratio. So we can find or calculate actually here, we are for the system at state four. So we have we are for a uh, relative specific volume for this. Now, how we can find the other property for this state? Again, we have a property for the system at this state. We can use this table, the dynamics table, to find the other properties for that state. We are 4 is equal to 40, uh, uh, 48. You, know, you can see here we are is uh, reduced 48. Uh, uh, let me see how much is it exactly, 48.8. So 48.8 is between these two actually. We are in between these two. So we can come to this table and by interpolation, by interpolation we can find the uh, U4, H4, PR4, T4 and the other dynamics property for this state, which the property which we are interested to find are T4 temperature at the state 4, 
and U4 as the internal energy for state 4. So we have found this. Now, how we can use these properties to find Q out? You know that we have a constant volume heat rejection process, so we can write this equation. This is first law analysis of this process. Q out equal to you know u1 minus u4. Why negative q out? Because you know there is heat rejection. Energy, internal energy is decreased here, and the direction of the heat is from the system to from. So we have this negative sign. If we uh, multiply both sides of this equation by a negative sign, finally we can write Q out is equal to U4 minus U1. Simply, we have U4 here, we have U1 in first step, so we can calculate Q out easily by this equation. And finally, we can put this Q out in this equation to find W net, which is equal to 418.17 kilojoule per kilogram. So this is the answer for part B of the question. In part C, we are interested to find the thermal efficiency of the cycle. You know that for any type of the heat engine or um, for any type of the cycle in the heat engine, simply we can use this equation. Thermal efficiency of the cycle is equal to W divided by QE. The work output the work output of the engine uh, is divided by the energy which is given to the system. The work output is this much. We have calculated Q is given uh, 800. Then this division will be uh, 0.52 or 52.3 percent is efficiency of this cycle. Now, if you remember, we had an Another equation for auto cycle, if you remember, which this equation is valid for cold air assumption. If you remember, I told you about this equation, this equation is only valid when you have cold air standard assumption. We assume that temperature of the air doesn't change. You know, it was mentioned that we need to uh, consider the variable specific heat ratio. It means the temperature of the air change, its property also change. So we need to use this calculation to find the answer for part C. But just for comparison, we can use this equation. We assume that temperature is constant, specific is constant during this process. Then we can use this equation. R is given if eight, K is the specific heat ratio, which is equal to 1.4. If we substitute in this equation, then finally, thermal efficiency of this auto cycle, when we have a cold air standard assumption, is 56.5%. This is the exact calculation, which is the answer for part C. This is just for comparison. This equation is just for comparison, and it shows how much this assumption is effective on our calculation. You can see here more than 4% error we have in our uh, final result when we have this assumption. And the part D, we are interested to calculate mean effective pressure. As I said, it is easy. We have this equation W net divided by V1 minus V2. W net we have calculated. How about V1 and V2? We know what is the relationship between them. We, uh, if we bring out V1, uh, V2 actually is equal to V1 divided by Vr. Then if we bring out V1 from both of these two terms, we can write V1 times 1 minus 1 divided by R, okay? So now we are, if we calculate, you know, we have the value net, R is, uh, comparison ratio we have that if we just calculate v1 we can solve this equation how we can calculate that again we can use this equation which is uh, the basic actually uh, uh, ideal gas law which says v1 is equal to r t1 divided by p1 which r is gas uh, constant actually which for a from table 
thermodynamic table, not the table which I showed you, table A17, I think table A3, I think you can find R for the A, which is equal to point two hundred eighty seven kilopascal cubic meter divided by gram Kelvin. So R is the constant you can find from the table. T1 we have, P1 also we have. Then we can find V1 or a specific volume which is equal to 0.8 something meter cubed per kilogram. So we have calculated V1 or the specific volume. You know, here is a specific volume, means volume per mass. It is not volume, but again, we can, still we can put in this equation and calculate MEP or mean effective pressure. We have W net, we have V1, then, and also we have R, if we substitute in this equation and use this unity conversion ratio, we can find the answer for MEP. How much is MEP? It's pressure, mean effective pressure, so its unit is Pascal or kilopascal here, which is equal to 574 kilopascal. The final part of the equation is about the uh, uh, is about the total power which we can get from this um, engine. We have already calculated how much is the uh, uh, the work uh, the net work per cycle. Now, if we uh, just uh, find the volume or if we just find the mass, we can find the network previous by the cycle. That one was over, now we are just to find the work. So to use this equation, we have the unit as the uh, work per mass actually. And uh, if we have mass, if we multiply mass of the working flow in this cycle by the volume, the work, uh, 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 the specific work for the cycle, we can find W net as net work produced by the cycle. How we can find this? Simply we can use this information. M is equal to VD divided by V1. VD is the uh, displacement volume or the, the volume which was given. If you remember, it was 1.6 liter. If you convert to meter cube, it is 0 0.0016 meter cube. V1 we have calculated specific volume at stage one, then we can calculate M. And you know that M is constant during this cycle. I mean, in M in state two is equal to this, M in state three is equal to this, and in all states, M is constant. V is changed, specific volume, that volume change, but M is constant. So we can calculate M. If you multiply M by W, we can calculate the network produced by each cycle or this cycle which we have here. It is 0.8 kilojoule, which we can get from this cycle. Now we have the, the work which we can get from a cycle. How we can calculate the work output for the engine when it is uh, in the revolution with uh, the you know the revolution was given uh, 4,000 revolution per minute. First of all, you know that in uh, for to complete each cycle for a four-stroke engine. Here also was mentioned that we have a four-stroke engine. Each cycle needs two revolution to complete and to produce work. So what we have here is work for one cycle. If we multiply the work for one cycle by the number of the revolution divided by required revolution for uh, to complete each cycle we can calculate the total work output of the engine when it is working in or is in rotation with this rpm so you can see here we have w net in that or revolution, which is revolution, uh, the number of revolution per minute, or RPM, which is 4,000, or in that, 
and number of the revolution to complete the cycle is two for a fourth track engine. And using the unity conversion ratio to uh, have a uh, uh, kilowatt and hour unit, we can calculate w.net for the total work output of this engine of this cycle with that revolution, which is equal to 26.8 for a four stroke engine. So here we finish the answer, the answer or an analysis of this question. But just to compare what I told you about the efficiency of the two stroke engine and four stroke engines, you know that for two stroke engines, we need only one revolution to complete the cycle. So here in our equation, instead of two and number of revolution to complete the cycle, here is two. Here we need to put one. Then you can see simply you can guess as well the total work output of the a two-stroke engine is equal to, which is double compared to the four-stroke engine. Here we have 26.8 kilowatt. Here is 23.6 kilowatt. You can see how much the efficiency, uh, how much the work output actually of the two-stroke engine is higher than four-stroke engine. However, due to the emission problem, which I told you, due to the uh, mm, uh, higher fuel combustion consumption of the a two-stroke engine, they are not that much, you know, the efficiency finally in real world will be lower. The number of the strokes or the cycle is not uh, the only effective parameter of the final efficiency of the two-stroke engine. So by this, we reach in the, this uh, patient, next patient I will introduce you, diesel cycle.